Okay, quick disclaimer before we get started. The Blockmates podcast is for entertainment and informational purposes only and does not constitute financial advice. The information and opinions expressed on the podcast are those of the hosts and guests and do not necessarily reflect the views of Blockmates or its affiliates. Listeners are encouraged to do their own research and consult with a financial advisor before making any investment decisions. Blockmates and its affiliates are not liable for any losses or damages incurred as a result of the reliance on the information or opinions expressed on this podcast. <laughs> Morning, everyone. Episode two of Good Morning DJ. Thanks for coming back. If you listened to the first one, if you didn't, <laughs> hello. Hope you enjoy this one. Um, <laughs> first place to start is uh, we did get a decent reaction to this on Tuesday, which is nice to see. And um, quick shout out to Shroomzy, who said, Me like sexy boy <laughs> with glasses in reference to you, Mike. One. Don't have one today. <laughs> took them off. <laughs> Sorry to Shroomsy that uh, Mike's took his gigs off this morning, but um, hopefully it's every bit as entertaining as it was the other day. But morning, fellas. How are we doing? All good. Um, it's not morning for me, but I've still got my tea, so it's not a prop. I've just drank it. <laughs> I think I'm replaced with hair fever today. We all so. just need fucking putting down, yeah. man. We're fucking... Yeah. It's... We just need a bullet in all our heads. We're pathetic, all yeah. of us. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> I know. I know. Mate, I was pathetic last night. My football team got knocked out of the playoffs and I was like, I've got a fucking record in the morning. How am I supposed to get myself up for that? <laughs> like a 12-year-old or something. <laughs> yeah, I was all right. I, it was, uh, I got over it pretty quickly and just went to sleep. You're not the one whose mentions are being blown up because I was giving it big licks three months ago. But um, anyway, anyway, on to the important stuff, I guess. Crypto. Mm-hmm. So if you don't know, I'll keep doing these brief intros as we pump the first few ones of these episodes out. But what we're going to do is give a quick overview of what we've seen in the last 24 hours with the aim to be twice a week. We might up the volume depending on the reaction we get. We'll have a look at price movements, uh, biggest winners, losers, and anything that we've seen since we last caught up with you in the news and world of Web3, crypto, blockchain, yada, yada, yada. So, um, First things first, uh, we will start with the prices and flows. So do you want me to run through these guys or Grant, do you want to take them and kind of give people the TLDR, Bitcoin, yeah, ETH, total market um, cap, et cetera? I can, I can just cover them. I mean, Bitcoin is pretty much the same as where we left off on, on Tuesday, $27,200. Um, it's not even worth reporting that it's up slightly. Um, ETH, similar. 18, 19, pretty much flat. Total market cap again coming in 1.18 trillion. Uh, Binance inflows, which is pretty strange. It seems to have reverted. So the minus 196 million that we seen the other day seems to have came back in as per DeFi Llama. Mm. So been a decent uptick in, in liquidity flowing through Binance, which is a little bit odd looking at like what's happening with prices and stuff. So we'll have to keep a close eye on that. Um, fear and greed, pretty much the same. Fifty one yeah. and still in the neutral camp, so not much changed. <laughs> not much change between Tuesday and Thursday, but um, yeah, I mean, not much more to say on that, really, is there? But uh, biggest winners, <laughs> biggest winners, render interesting play on the GPU market. Um, yeah, so should we talk about that? Um, <clears throat> this this is quite interesting, and um, is I wouldn't say it's a very early trade. I'd, I'd say it's probably got a lot of space left to breathe, I think, in it. And the way the, what's, what's happening is Render and the RNDR token, um, they're effectively trying to decentralize um, GPU processing power. And I, I don't know how much of a gimmick that is because I'm, I'm not that technically inclined. If it feels a little bit like Helium trying to, centralized cloud computing and all that kind of stuff. But um, as we know with anything, logic, if you try and make too much sense of it in this space, it's just, it's a its a stupid task, isn't it? So <laughs> if it has a narrative around it behind GPU markets, which are obviously in extreme demand at the minute, um, basically down to augmented reality, AI, in a past life, potentially Bitcoin miners, but obviously we've moved away from that at the minute. And all anyone can talk about in the crypto and further field in private markets is, is AI. So anything around GPUs and processing power around that, that can be le- leached upon the back of, um, it seems to be catching a bid. Like if you look at NVIDIA, that's up 3X <laughs> since October, 2022. Um, 
it's like I think it's like around the seventh or eighth biggest uh, market cap on the planet at the minute. So this kind of feels like crypto's higher beta player too, NVIDIA, in my opinion. So it's an interesting one to keep an eye on, particularly as the AI craze increases, demand for GPUs increases. Um, augmented reality, we're mm-hmm. seeing Apple on, I think it's a Ju- June the 5th that they're potentially going to announce their mixed reality headset and stuff like that as well. So it all feeds back into this kind of who's supplying the GPUs, who's got the picks and shovels for the largest narratives on the on the planet at the minute. So that's that's why I think that's happening. It probably just is a higher bit of player on, on NVIDIA and GPUs, but we'll see. Cool. Uh, Lido, up around 20%. Um, seen a little bit of a pullback, but... Uh... So there was, um, there was a governance proposal posted around 18 hours ago on the governance forum of Lido, suggesting that they could be a 30 to 50% revenue share. Lido is pretty damn profitable for, and is now the kind of top DeFi protocol. So it used to be curve dominance on DeFi Llama, and now it's like Lido dominance. So liquid staking markets have flipped the DEX sector in, in DeFi, which is always interesting to keep an eye on. But if there was uh, an increased revenue share or actually any revenue share at all with um, the LDO token to LDO stakers, then could be quite interesting. The only issues I have is, um, does that then draw in kind of regulatory eyes and it starts to look more like a security guaranteeing revenue share to its Mm. holders? So I wouldn't hold my breath for for this to get passed personally. Um, I like the idea of it in in principle, (laughs) but um, and some of the calculations on the forum as well were, were kind of factoring in the LDO token as how profitable Lido is. And I don't think you should factor in your own token in your own treasury because there's only a few ways you can actually <laughs> offload that. So no, well, um, it's a bit of a funny one. Well, yeah, it's, it's fluctuating value, isn't it? And we'll get onto this with, with the next, some of the next subjects already um, with USDT and stuff and their balance sheet. But yeah, it's uh, we've seen some uptick as well with obviously other other players on LSDs. You've, I think I've seen well Flash, which is a particularly low cap. It's I think 10, it's about 10 last 8 million shot. now. Yeah, might be 11. I can't remember. 10, 10 now. So that 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 was up 80% when I last looked last night. Uh, LBR had a had a big uptick, didn't it, from the from the lows. It was a, I think it was priced in at about $0.65. So that was a good, well, a good 3x on from the lows. And then, um, I think that's the, the the big the big winners there for, and the low caps and again yeah. what we said on Tuesday, it's the potential of the upside with with LSDs as as the Shanghai upgrade move will move forward now, um how that plays yeah, out over a, the next couple the, of years. The only other thing on Lido, I'll just yeah. touch upon that before we so move the, on is, um I'm hearing kind of behind the scenes there's an awful lot of business development work happening to kind of solidify the liquid staking staked ETH as potentially being a, a base currency. So instead of like people naturally pairing their token with um, ETH or USDC, there's a lot of business development work happening behind the scenes. So it's it'll be token X and, and staked ETH. So that's happening. It's happening with Frax. It's happening with Rocket Pool. So they're all just going to be fighting. So it's it's going to be, I think it'd be good for, good for investors to kind of speculate on which one wins out on that because it's a huge market. So, um, Keep an eye on stuff like that, but I can't say much more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, biggest losers, I feel like I'm so sick of my feed being full of this Ben shit now. Um, <clears throat> but more <laughs> memes getting hammered. <laughs> yeah, bit boy, God, hurts my yeah, soul we'll, that we have to even talk we'll about this. Him. But we do have to talk about it. Um, yeah, more Pepe bashing. But first, Ben, bit boy, God, as if people don't already yeah, know. Yeah, Dan, Dan covered it in the newsletter. It like perfectly well from like the first rumblings of this happening yeah. and then to where we are now. And I'm pretty sure <laughs> we included in the newsletter that we'll certainly do a post-mortem as well, because we knew there would be one. <laughs> so, um, so after this yeah. gentleman, <laughs> I don't want him to sue me because I know he's like, I'll have to run yeah. to Kobe for him to pay my court fees if that's the case. <laughs> um, so he effectively, <laughs> this, this Ben token finally feels like he's figured out how to use his, his MetaMask. And after posting around six days ago that he will never sell his, his Ben allocation for at least six months. 
Um, someone has pointed out that he's actually offloaded 76 grand worth. Um, and now that wallet where his tokens were, were empty. Um, and it's, it's definitely his wallet because he posted it from his own account showing to, to prove to people he wouldn't sell it. <laughs> so then he's, he's just completely offloaded it. And as a consequence, right. the token's been no. completely destroyed. <laughs> yeah, we probably should leave that at there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I yeah. guess like, again, it's like what, what's catching the bid again. And we said on Tuesday, it's more the fundamentals and which we we sort of like to see only because I'm probably sold myself <laughs> that I missed everything in terms of <laughs> any of that, uh, the meme narrative for the shop here that it was. But yeah, um, it's just the nature of the game and the nature of the cycle. Yeah. It always comes to the end of, of this period and this is what happens. People get, again, people trying to make it all back in one trade off every every token going. Mm-hmm. Uh, even the, uh, the whole Andrew Tate it's was okay. alive and kicking last night and... Uh, <laughs> There was a lot within the space of about twenty minutes. There was thirty different coins on every single word he'd he'd mentioned. There was a never. There was a. There was what else was there? And uh, in a couple of chats, I was in. Uh, there was a fair few bids. <laughs> so, so, it's uh, hey, if you can make money, you can make money. Sluts, <laughs> sluts, <laughs> oh, in the chat. I guess that's what the. Uh... The talking was that, that was the start yeah that was just the start funnily enough okay i'm i'm leaving <laughs> oh my god and pivot into ai that'll just be as much as a fucking yeah. shit show in a couple of years i mean talk about not saying too much or we'll get in trouble the talking that mike sent me the other day what might have been saturday or something that was i can't it's almost like i'm teasing people by saying that very very funny but in what was a massive flash in the pan yeah. meme season could we call it that felt like re- very very short anyway um yeah kind of i'm almost Absolutely. are we glad to I'm see the back of it that. sort of see the back of it yeah get back to the fun st- well the, the more fun stuff it's all it's <laughs> all it's all, it's all pre- it's all pretty fun right, it's happening in the news <laughs> i think the only place to start with uh the news is ledger isn't it um shall we give a tldr basically they don't give <laughs> shit about security <laughs> risks or do they um have seen some funny tweets about this kind of thing but yeah let, let's give like top line mike do you want to cover this one like what kind of, where did the narrative start and what do we now know uh they've introduced some like background software uh to essentially be able to recover your key through a third party um by splitting it into three parts and then it'll get but then in terms of that you have to um provide personal identification it's a case of it's an optional add-on it's not and it's only built into the newer ledgers so like the s plus and the ledger is it the x so in terms of if you update that firmware you can opt into this um the issue is with not your keys not your coins um, and levels of protection is what does that in terms of a, an attack, a potential attack vector, what does that present um, opportunity for the wrong person in the future potentially to exploit this? Um, and essentially, uh, yeah, or not your kings or your coins remains in place with these with these potentially cold wallets where it should be hard storage and it should be safe, secure, and it should only be personal to you. So there's been some component of contention with it, what, what that presents. Um, I don't, like personally, I, w- I will not be downloading that firmware. I will not be using a third party. The problem is with ledgers they've also had in the past, they haven't had the best uh, uh, mm-hmm. protection of data. They had a breach, was it last year, in terms of personal data. So when you put, in, when you put two and two together, it's like, mm, are they... I can get the concept in a way for for a more normal audience and like onboarding people. But on the other hand, um, in terms of protection of your own assets and and money, um, there is a few questions. For me, they should have just Hmm. they should just have a separate hardware device that has that option if they want to go down that route. Um, I understand what they're getting at because they're going to be Hmm. they're going to be battling with account abstraction and social proof and everything that's coming on chain now, which. You can have social recovery and 
through smart contract wallets and stuff like that. So they're obviously going to feel that pinch because people will probably pivot to that. Yeah. Um, and they've kind of knee jerked with this, but um, they should just have a separate device in my opinion, which makes no, absolutely no sense. I don't even think it's that major of yeah. an issue if I'm, if I'm being completely honest. Um, but no, no, it's like that um, was when I was getting yeah, just P, just a PR nightmare. I mean, I'm pretty sure you were kind of cringing in your boots, Alex. <laughs> it didn't stop CT throwing up some absolute uh, pearlers, though, did it? So check out my new Legend Nano X tutorial. <laughs> I'm just smashing into pieces <laughs> in true. CT fashion and throws it in a fire pit and just <laughs> blow torches the shit out of it for the next 30 seconds. <laughs> I hope you didn't yeah. have it. Uh, I hope you backed it up. <laughs> <laughs> All for the engagement, eh? All yeah, for the engagement. But All funny regardless. Anyway. So I guess what's what's our last subject then for the day? I can skim the Apple stuff and we can just get straight on to the Tether stuff. So basically, um, probably... Begrudgingly, Apple have allowed um, the Axie Infinity game to be allowed on the App Store, which is quite interesting because the Uniswap app has recently been approved. So it looks like Apple is starting to warm up, but it's also the big players in each sector of the industry that are being allowed on. So I think there's probably a lot of um, bureaucracy and a lot of kind of political games between these kind of projects and and Apple to get them listed on there. But um, just want to keep an eye on personally but we can move on to the tether stuff i think yeah well i mean the so the tether stuff the tldr is tether is buying bitcoin stable coin reserves uh with realized profits mike we talked about this yesterday didn't we so do you want to kind of cover that one yeah yeah I'll, I'll be as quickly as i can with it um <clears throat> in terms of obviously usdt it's backed by traditional financial assets in another a, uh, a number of other assets in the case of any obviously stable coin that you want your um, your assets to be greater than your liabilities, which is USDT, so it's redeemable and, and true to value. Uh, otherwise, it becomes, uh, as we've seen with under collateralized coins, and that it, it, we can lose peg and, and many of other things. Um, the issue you have if they, they start buying Bitcoin, um, start buying Bitcoin with the percentage of their profits is then that becomes part of their assets back in their liabilities so obviously with that they have another other assets they had a report out recently but it didn't detail all of the assets particularly however they do have uh, i think it's six percent in precious metals um in terms of what they are what they are backed by for the usdt um if you're adding another volatile asset into the mix, then the greater that store of value in terms of Bitcoin and the price impact that that has, how does that affect that affect their overall uh, backing? And and that's the simple mm-hmm. case of it. I think it works out as two point four percent that would not be backed by traditional financial instruments. So you're saying they're they're in a surplus with it at the moment, but if you had a massive drawdown and the more they're stacked, would would that be a case that they would then be underbacked? And then would that fa- affect the, the overall asset price in terms of deep pegging, et cetera? So it's just one to keep an eye on. Like I say, they're still, they're still being profitable for the year. I think it was like 1.5 billion for the year in terms of profit margin or whatever. So again, yeah. they are a profitable company, but it's it, it all goes down to, to the backing uh, of the assets behind Back behind the USDT token, so mm-hmm. if that remains positive, then I see no issue. It's just it, it got it's all down to this underlying assets and how they report and how how the market moves forward. Um, obviously, with Bitcoin, it's never seen potential. I don't know any potential uh, financial fall down. If we if we were to see that, how much impact would that have going forward? So yeah. I think that's that, that's about the TLDR on it, really. Sweet. I mean, look. Our aim is to keep these things short and succinct. We've already broken the rule of 15 minutes and gone into 20 this time, and it's only the second Sorry. one. But um, it, it's probably all our fault. So we'll keep trying to make these better and sweeter and listening to you guys if you tell us what you want, what you don't want. Because um, as we all know, we could easily fill up two hours of these things <clears throat> probably every morning. So 
Uh, I will call it there. Uh, thanks again, fellas, for jumping on. Uh, we'll get this out very, very shortly, and I will see everyone All back right. on Take Tuesday. Day out. Your next career move could be the one you never imagined. Web3 Nomads. Everywhere jobs, for anywhere people.